Erklärung dafür, was dieses Wetter verursacht hat. Meteorologists are at a loss to explain what is causing this weather and why it has taken five surprise. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. At least 30 civilians have been killed, many of them children in northern Afghanistan after airstrikes were called in to protect US and Afghan troops fighting the Taliban. NATO has said it will investigate the reported deaths near Kunduz. The air support was apparently requested after two US soldiers were killed. This man said airplanes started bombing from 10 at night until 6 in the morning. Four children, a father, mother and grandfather from one family are all here. We pulled out their bodies from the rubble. Furious Afghanis put the children's bodies on display. A gesture of protest in the northern city of Kunduz after more than 30 civilians were reported killed and dozens wounded in airstrikes on a nearby village. The governor of Kunduz says the strikes were called in to protect Afghan and U.S. special forces during heavy fighting with the Taliban. Two U.S. servicemen were also killed in those clashes. The violence underscores a shaky security situation in Kunduz, which the Taliban briefly controlled last year and came close to overrunning again last month. At least a dozen civilians have been reported killed as insurgents step up their offensive in government-held western Aleppo. Rebel groups detonated three car bombs and fired shells close to pro-government forces on Thursday. The attacks are part of an attempt to break the government's siege in rebel-held eastern Aleppo. To avoid unnecessary casualty, the Russian Defense Ministry declared a humanitarian pause in Aleppo from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Friday. The American dream is dead. Hillary Clinton stated multiple times, falsely, that 17 U.S. intelligence agencies had assessed that uh, Russia was uh, uh, the source of our publications. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's false. Decades of lies, cover-ups, and scandal have finally caught up with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is under FBI investigation again after her emails were found on pervert Anthony Weiner's laptop. Think about that. America's most sensitive secrets, unlawfully sent, received, and exposed by Hillary Clinton, her staff, and Anthony Weiner. Hillary cannot lead a nation while crippled by a criminal investigation. Hillary Clinton, unfit to serve. And a drastic rise in firearm background checks just ahead of the election as some voters feel, fear a win for Hillary could restrict their Second Amendment rights. New government data shows that the number of Americans looking for gun permits is on the rise for the 18th straight month. Back in October, 2.3 million background checks were processed, a new monthly record. And it's not just because hunting season is in full swing. The outcome of Tuesday's election will set the tone for gun ownership in this country. The candidates have very different visions. We have a moral obligation to reduce gun violence. I am willing, with your help and the help of responsible gun owners, to stand up to the gun lobby. Hillary wants to take your guns away. She wants to leave you unprotected in your home. Concerns about the possibility of Election Day violence sparking the security preparations. In a spokesman for the Secretary of State told us this morning that, quote, we are looking to use whatever resources we have at our disposal to make sure we've taken the necessary steps to keep elections secure. And most of the Trump supporters who are, as you know, fiercely loyal to Donald Trump, most of the supporters I talked to said that they are convinced that he is going
going to win. But on this question of what if he doesn't, there has been some heated rhetoric and some at times alarming rhetoric coming from Trump's supporters and even Trump campaign surrogates from the podiums at Donald Trump's own rally suggesting what they could do and what might happen if he loses. With just five days left until Election Day, Donald Trump's supporters are confronting a tough question. What happens if he loses? Attack! 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 We will never accept defeat! The Republican nominee has sown doubts about the integrity of the electoral process. It's a rigged system, folks. Fueling fears of a dishonest democracy. Hillary's corruption is a threat to democracy. And he has refused to say that he would accept the results of the election. I'll keep you in suspense. And it's not just the candidate. A small but vocal group of high-profile Trump supporters are firing verbal warning shots steeped in violent imagery of post-election unrest. From sheriffs... It is pitchfork and torches time in America. ...to former congressmen. It's time to boycott, picket, maybe even stop paying taxes. ...and conservative radio hosts. We're coming to tear it down. We're coming to rip it up. We're coming to kick your ass. The incendiary rhetoric is being echoed now by some Trump supporters. If it actually happened, are you saying that we can't? Isn't that what DC's for, is to, 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 to breath our frustration? This man telling the Wall Street Journal he'd take matters into his own hands if Clinton is elected. There was going to be probably a, a movement to where we will go and take them out of power. It sounds like you're saying that it would be acceptable to assassinate a president. If she's corrupt, why should she be able to stay in office? Well, law enforcement officials tell us that they are getting intelligence, which suggests that al-Qaeda uh, may be planning a strike here in the U.S. Now, the information has not been corroborated, but investigators here in the U.S. are reaching out to counterterrorism officials in those states and really across the country uh, to ensure that they are aware of this information and they are trying to assess its intelligence. But a senior law enforcement official is telling us that this is a threat that they are taking seriously. We have not heard much about or really from al-Qaeda in years recent, uh, perhaps in part because of the rise of the Islamic State. Uh, so what to make then of the fact that this, uh, again, threat uh, comes from al-Qaeda? Well, in a lot of ways, ISIS, of course, has changed the way these terrorist organizations attack uh, by inspiring lone wolf type attacks. And so al-Qaeda, in some ways, has taken a page out of ISIS's playbook. And so uh, even though al-Qaeda, and U.S. officials will tell you this, even though al-Qaeda has been diminished in its capabilities since 9-11, it still has the capability of carrying out these inspired type of attacks. Now, attacks. Now, we don't know if, if that's what this is. Again, in, investigators are they're still trying to assess the uh, the credibility of this threat. Uh, but Al Qaeda still has the capability of attacking the U.S. Maybe not wide scale attacks, large attacks like we saw in 9/11, but they still have that capability. We're taking a look at this one, a bomb threat at Venice High School. Action Air 1 there just flying over the scene. That's the football field. That's where the students were evacuated to first. A car bomb has rocked the Turkish city of Diyarbakir, reportedly killing at least one person and wounding dozens more. It happened near a police building in a central district. The blast coming after the overnight arrests of leaders of the pro-Kurdish HDP and other party politicians. The governor's office in Diyarbakir, the largest city in the mainly Kurdish southeast, says militants from the Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, are believed to be behind the attack. Turkey's been in a state of emergency since a failed coup in July. A subsequent purge has seen thousands of public sector workers fired or suspended.
Pensioners in Greece have taken to the streets to protest against new pension cuts. The reductions are part of the austerity package the government agreed to with international lenders. More than 4,000 pensioners rallied outside the Ministry of Labour in Athens. Shipwrecks off the coast of Libya have claimed the lives of at least 239 migrants. Clearing was described as Paris's largest migrant camp. <laughs> French police moved in at dawn to evacuate thousands of people living in tents under a bridge in the northeast of the capital, near Stalingrad metro station. Numbers have sought here since the closure of the so-called jungle camp outside the port of Calais on the northern French coast. Officials say the migrants, many from war-torn countries such as Afghanistan and Sudan, are being transferred to holding centres across the Paris area where asylum requests will be processed. There were tearful goodbyes as the last migrants left the Calais jungle and French authorities declared the camp empty. Families, women and unaccompanied female minors were among the last few hundred residents to leave. They're being bused to processing centres where they can seek asylum in France and the UK. A cluster of polio-like illness in children is under investigation in Washington state. So far, two of nine suspected cases have been confirmed as a rare condition known as AFM. One child has died. Maria Villarreal is at the Seattle Children's Hospital where three patients are being treated. Maria, good morning. Good morning. The affected children range in ages from 3 to 14 years old. All of them all of a sudden had a disabling pain in their arms and in their legs. And while AFM is not contagious, the CDC says there is no cause or cure. I'm now joined from Beijing by Yang Yudgong. He is a professor at the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. Let's talk about uh, steps because we've talked in the past year or so about the various steps the space program has taken. So how important, how significant is this step? Uh, well, good evening, Mike. So nice to talk with you again. And uh, for this uh, launch, it is so important because it is very essential and very important for future uh, China's space program. Not only for the manned space program, but also for China's future deep space uh, exploration programs. Uh, and uh, with this uh, launch vehicle, we have already uh, placed the uh, second or the third row in the capability of the launch vehicles. For many, so many years, you know that uh, China, although we already has the largest uh, count of the launches uh, just behind behind U.S. and Russia, but the capability of China's launch vehicle is far behind other countries. Good evening. As several counties battle wildfires, the governor declared a statewide emergency. His goal is to get crews immediate access to state resources. The Kentucky Division of Forestry says there are 38 active fires that have burned 3,800 acres. This Sky First video just in our newsroom. It is from Pike County near Shelby Valley High School along US 23. You can see several plumes of smoke built.
a torch landscape across the state of Alabama where there, where there were 37 new fires yesterday. They've all been contained, but we expect more fires today as the sun comes up and the temperatures head for record highs again. It's been very serious, and it's been building really since the middle of September. Drought-related brush fires are breaking out across Alabama. Humidity's been low and the wind has been high, so the fire behavior, you know, makes it more intense. The whole area is a tinderbox. 46 counties are under a burn ban. It's been dry. Birmingham and Anniston's average rainfall in October is more than three inches, but this year there's been virtually none. This is more than one of 1,200 fires that have torched the Alabama landscape since October 1st, charring more than 13,000 acres. That's five times as many fires versus last October. About 35% of where it should be. This is part of a system of reservoirs providing drinking water and recreation to millions. It's also a system suffering from extreme drought. When I was young, I used to come out here with my dad. These pictures paint an idyllic snapshot of Clinton, New Jersey's reservoirs. A recent video tells a very different story. Drought has depleted the water in all the Northeast Jersey system reservoirs, prompting a drought warning in 14 counties. My office's investigation shows that the developer, Mission Street Development LLC, knew for at least a year before they began selling condominiums that this 58-story residential building was sinking much faster than expected. Yet, they went ahead and sold condominiums for a handsome profit without telling the buyers about the situation, even though they were legally required to disclose it. The building has sunk 16 inches and news reports say it is tilting two inches at the base.
Across East and Southern Africa, what one filmmaker calls a threat to our very humanity is driving the world's largest land mammal toward extinction. African elephants whose ivory is prized in many Asian countries are being slaughtered by the tens of thousands. In Tanzania alone, the elephant population has dropped by 60%. Imagine that, 60% in just five years, mostly because of ivory poaching. The World Meteorological Organization says the global average concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere reached 400 parts per million for the first time in 2015. The growth spurred in CO2 was fueled by the El Nino event, which started last year and had a strong impact well into this year. The WMO study says this triggered droughts in tropical regions and reduced the capacity of sinks like forests vegetation and the oceans to absorb CO2. Now, complex international agreements can take decades to negotiate, then years to come into effect. But less than 12 months after it was adopted, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change is now entering into force. But as our science editor, Tarek Basley, explains, getting this far may well have been the easy part. Not one, but two lunar events are taking place tonight. A total lunar eclipse coupled with an aptly named supermoon. Yeah, this is sped up animation you're looking at now of what it should look like. And weather permitting in your area, anyone can get a good view of the moon. Well, you should be able to see at least some of it. We do stand on the edge of a great new era. A great new era. We built this great industrial powerhouse. The whole idea of industrial capitalism in the West, government that was going to invest in infrastructure. It is a time for pathfinders and pioneers. What happened to the American century? The share of income that we put into infrastructure has gone down starkly. If you travel around the country, there's just not that much that's new. What happened to America's ideal of progress? All these things that have been established after the Great Depression fell apart. You'll see the whole streets are just closing down. A community that's undereducated, underemployed. Baltimore was a blue collar town. Now the air quality is wonderful because there's no industry here anymore. It's beyond life. Detroit had a population of about 2 million people in 1950. It's now a little over 600,000. huge percentage of their budget goes to the military. This is an economy that's based to a large degree on killing people. If you were to cut the military budget in half, we'd have a depression in the United States. So they're literally working full time and making poverty wages. You have 1,600 vacant houses. It's insane. They said, let's save a few dollars and pump the water in from the Flint River. Decades and decades of being ignored. Americans are finding themselves in a desperate situation. They're a new state. A lot of talented people here, but you will never know because of the reputation we got. If you're an entrepreneur right now in America, the last thing you want to do is take risks. This is not a world I want to take risks. America is not the pillar of democracy and freedom that it was once seen to be. Here we are, naked in front of the world. It's a real tragedy.